Hi, I'm David Gross of the law firm of Fagri, Baker & Daniels, and I want to talk to you about a few tips for asking questions at a deposition. Let's say you're sitting at a chair about to start your deposition, and now you're going to ask your questions. What are some good guidelines? Well, let's start with identify exhibits. When you have an exhibit, Exhibit 22, make sure you place on the record what the exhibit is. This is Exhibit 22. It's a letter. It has a date. It has a Bates number in the lower right-hand corner. Make it so that when someone reads your transcript a year from now, they know exactly what exhibit you're talking about. I can tell you it's a real problem when you don't do that. In addition, when you're asking questions about the exhibit, use the exhibit number in your questions. When did you send the email that's Exhibit 22? Did you sign Exhibit 22? Did you read Exhibit 22? That will really help you when you're looking at your transcript a year from now. When you're asking questions at a deposition, you should also try to ask self-contained questions. I'll give you an example. Let's say you're trying to show that someone never made a phone call to the ABC Pizza Company in 2008, 2009, or 2010. Instead of saying something like this, in the year 2008, did you make any phone calls to the ABC Pizza Company? Answer no. And then saying, what about 2009? What about 2010? Instead of doing that, ask the same question three straight times, just change the year. In the year 2008, did you ever call the ABC Pizza Company? No. In the year 2009, did you ever call the ABC Pizza Company? No. In the year 2010, did you ever call the ABC Pizza Company? No. By asking a self-contained question, if you need to cross-examine the witness and impeach the witness on a particular year, you've got a perfect question. Otherwise, your impeachment could be something like, well, weren't, didn't I ask you the following question, same with 2010, answer no? That's not going to be helpful at trial. So ask self-contained questions so that someone can take that question and use it in a brief or use it in a trial. Also, watch for your own personal ticks. I'll give you one tick I see all the time. People start questions with the word and. Did you send anything or did you phone or call ABC Pizza Company in 2008? No, I did not. And did you call ABC Pizza Company in 2009? I did not. And did you call ABC Company in 2010? I did not. And did you work for this construction company? Yes. And what were your responsibilities? You'll hear and all over the place. Be aware of your own ticks. Look at a transcript and try to clean them up. It's okay to ask simple questions without anything at the beginning or anything at the end. That's what you do when you're taking a really good deposition. And finally, when the witness doesn't answer your question, if it's important, make sure you get an answer. Always ask yourself, have I gotten a direct answer to my question? Did you make any phone calls to the ABC Pizza Company in 2010? Well, it was a busy year. You need to keep asking the question. I understand it was a busy year, but my question is, did you make any phone calls to the ABC Company in the year 2010? I had a lot on my mind, but my question is, did you make any phone calls to the ABC company, uh, Pizza Company in 2010? Uh, no, I didn't. Well, now you got your answer. I've seen too many deposition transcripts where the lawyer doesn't get the answer to important questions. If it's important, work towards an answer, even if the best answer you can get is, I just don't know or I can't remember. If you follow these simple tips on deposition questions, you're going to notice that your transcripts are cleaner, that your transcripts are more useful, and that you've actually increased your chances of winning motions and winning trials because you have a good record, a clean record, of good questions that stand alone. Good luck.